Good morning and welcome back to Tactics Board. Norwich City are back in Championship action tomorrow evening, just three days after their two-all draw with QPR at Loftus Road. They welcome Watford to Carrow Road in what is a huge game in the Championship playoff race and it will be quite a difficult one based on the visitors' form in recent weeks. There is a little bit more pressure on the home side, of course, after failing to get those three points against QPR over the line, having led late in the second half and they did go to a team that was 22nd in the championship that had really struggled at home and came away without having won the game so a little bit less confidence you would think going into this one than maybe there was ahead of the weekend and it makes it even bigger and I think Norwich fans are expecting to be impressed after what was a pretty lacklustre result a very lacklustre performance in the first half at least against QPR and against Watford it isn't the easiest um, opposition to, to sort of win them back. They have been in good form recently. They lost 2-1 at the weekend, but to Leicester, who obviously look like they're absolutely running away with the league. But under Valerian Ishmael, they've played some fairly decent football. They're a little bit less direct than maybe his, his Barnsley and West Brom teams were. They dominate a little bit more possession. They look to build things out wide and then cut back to their strikers, who are generally sort of fox-in-the-box types that maybe don't contribute loads to the build-up play, but nowhere the ball is going to fall in the box. It will be a big test for Norwich City's full-backs. Jack Stacey and Dimitris Yunudis have had question marks over their defensive abilities at different times this season. For Jack Stacey, he seems to have ironed out those kinks a little bit in the last few weeks. Dimitris Yunudis was actually culpable in part for both of the QPR goals at the weekend. Of course, he ran the ball out of play and then was fairly switched off when, when QPR took that quick throw in for the equaliser. And for the first goal, um, he didn't really get close enough to the cross, which obviously then Angus Gunn parried to Jack Colback for a simple finish. So they'll need to be switched on. Yunulis probably needs to improve his defensive performance from recent weeks if he's going to work well against Watford. Of course, they have a lot of talent in those wide areas. Emmanuel Dennis, someone who they signed on loan in January from Nottingham Forest, somebody who everyone's seen the capabilities of in the Premier League and scored their goal actually in that Leicester defeat. So definitely some danger from those wide areas. It's important that Norwich are switched on there um, and that's something they'll have to pay attention to. I know everyone will be interested in, in Jamal Lewis for the Watford view on that. I'd suggest going and watching Terrace Talk um, on our channel, but he probably isn't going to be at the centre of the danger if you take his recent performances at face value, he hasn't been excellent for the Hornets. And although he sort of has been in and out of the team um, and might be in it at Carrow Road, he doesn't look like being a key player. Nonetheless, the wingers are very dangerous. So it's in those wide areas where Norwich probably do need to, to be focused. As far as what David Wagner does, it will be very interesting actually to see which way he goes. Of course, they went to QPR where they were significant favourites and probably weren't as proactive as they have been even in games against Coventry and West Brom, who of course were sort of in and around the playoff places when they, they played teams like that. So there does seem to be a fairly separate home and away strategy, which makes it feel like Norwich might try and take the game to Watford a little bit more, try and dominate possession a little bit more. We're probably likelier to see Gabriel Sara in that sort of number 10 role, but there is also the three game week element that means Wagner will have to sort of balance the, the team out in terms of fitness and game time and how they're feeling. Josh Sargent and Jack Stacey, of course, had to be hauled off midway through the second half with sort of small issues that they had going into the game at Loftus Road. So it'll be interesting to see how David Wagner goes, both tactically and personnel-wise. But I've had a go, as you all will know, with my predicted starting eleven. So here it is. So I've got Angus Gunn in goal, Jack Stacey at right back, Grant Hanley and Ben Gibson at centre-back with Dimitris Yunudis at left-back, Marcelino Nunez and Kenny McLean in the centre of midfield with Onel Hernandez on the right, Borja Sainth on the left and Gabriel Sara behind Josh Sargent. Up front in goal, again, no real question about Angus Gunn, who I didn't think had his best game at the weekend. Of course, as I mentioned, he did parry it to Cole back, and although it didn't feel like there was much he could have done, maybe the area he put it into could have been a little bit better, but he was composed with his distribution, pulled off a couple of decent saves, and given his performances throughout this season compared maybe to George Long's 
again, I don't really see his position being threatened before long. I already spoke about Jack Stacey and how he's probably improving the defensive side of his game. He seems to be getting back the form that he had at the start of the season. And although he was ill going into the game at QPR, I thought he was one of Norwich's best players, even in a first half where the team looked really, really poor. He seemed to be driving them forward and, and keen to get forward down that right-hand side. So you can see why David Wagner likes him. He seems to be getting back to his best form and I'd be very, very surprised if he wasn't in this starting eleven, barring any fitness issues. Of course, at centre-back, Hanley and Gibson, and I don't think either of them had a particularly good game um, at QPR. Of course, Michael Fry got across Grant Hanley for the winner. Ben Gibson, I thought, had an absolutely torrid time with Sinclair Armstrong, especially in the first half, couldn't really keep up with the pace or the physicality of Armstrong, couldn't really match up to that battle on the halfway line. Um, you get the feeling that he's probably more suited to those games where he's parked in his own box, heading, kicking, clearing. And although he is good in possession, I think he finds some nice balls sort of into the channel and, and in behind. Um, you would suggest there are still defensive weaknesses and the capability to, to maybe full foul of the strengths of an opposition striker but with what Watford offer I think it could be more his type of game and I think he could impress whereas Grant Hanley might not get to show off that pace that he has when he's battling with strikers running in behind but he is clearly still getting back up to speed after injury issues for nearly a year now obviously struggled with that initial Achilles issue then had the, the hamstring injury after he came back and probably patience is needed with him but uh, at the moment it doesn't feel like there's much alternative unless Wagner suddenly starts fancying Danny Bart, which feels unlikely. So I've gone for those two centre-back, left-back. It's it's pretty much the same story as I say every week with Dimitris Yunulis in that I don't think he's been playing his best. I think Sam McCallum's been better, in fact, but I still think he'll be in the team because he's clearly a Wagner favourite and he likes something about him. You can tell that technically he's very good, but I don't think he's been using that in the best way in, the rec in recent weeks. And as I said, this is an important game for him to be playing well especially defensively given how Watford sort of build up and where a lot of their goals come from so he's going to be an important player and I'd expect him to start given how Wagner normally goes in the centre of midfield I've gone for Nunez and McLean and that's partly based on how things unfolded on Saturday and also the fact that I referenced this sort of home away split where it feels like Gabriel Sara might be in the advanced 10 role a little bit more often at Carrow Road than away from it. Of course, Barnes and Sargent were up front at Loftus Road and Nunez was the casualty of that. And I think he can feel hard done by, especially given his recent performances, Gabriel Sarra's recent performances. He's been one of Norwich's most consistent midfielders over the last few months and I'd expect him to get back into this team if Gabriel Sarra does end up in that number 10. Of course, that's one of the bigger gambles that I'm playing in this predicted eleven. But uh, it feels like Wagner has a decision to make there and that's probably the decision I would make and I'd expect him to do so at Carrow Road. Alongside him, Kenny McLean, who I actually thought one, was one of Norwich's better players, of course found an absolutely fantastic pass to Ashley Barnes when the score was at 2-all and he really should have been scoring, took the ball down well but then planted it straight at Asmir Begovic and that would have been one of the assists, one of the passes of the season from Kenny McLean after he scored his first championship goal of the campaign so I thought that was a really well-rounded excellent performance from him good to see him back at his best and hopefully he can continue that on Tuesday evening and I almost said this weekend there I've sort of got out of the rhythm of uh, of championship games in midweek but yeah uh, tomorrow evening I think Kenny McLean could be a key player and you'd very very much expect him to be in the starting 11 on the right I've gone for Ono Hernandez and that's based on Obviously, the, the assumption that Jonathan Rowe won't be available. He went down with a hamstring injury and signalled to come off despite the fact that Norwich had no subs left. And although I'm filming this before um, David Wagner's press conference ahead of Watford, you'd assume he isn't available. So it comes down to a choice between Christian Fastnach and Jonathan Rowe. And given Norwich have looked better after Fastnach's departure in both of their last two games. And Ono Hernandez, although he hasn't contributed enough in terms of goal contributions, does seem a bit more of a threat than Fastnacht. I think probably out of the two of them, it's about time that decision got made. And although I know Wagner really likes Fastnacht, he has also proven to like Hernandez throughout his time at the club. So I'm gambling on him taking that decision, although I could very much see Fastnacht remaining in the eleven. On the other side, it's not really that much of a decision to be made over Borja Scienth, of course, who um, was took off for uh, whether there was a ghost yellow card or not still seems fairly unclear. But I thought he was one of Norwich's 
more dangerous players, especially in the first half against QPR, but he just couldn't quite pull it off. And you see that inconsistency in his game where he seems to consistently perform well and, and show the intent. He doesn't consistently produce the end product. And that's almost the opposite to John Rowe, who maybe isn't as involved as Sainz throughout a game, but seemingly always puts it away when he gets a chance. So you'd like to see a bit of both of them take each other's game um, in a way. But I think Sainz is still looking very, very good and very unlikely to be dropped for this one. I already spoke about the sort of Sarah situation and why I can see David Wagner choosing him in the number 10 role. I think he's he's been better in that role at times in the last few weeks. Didn't really have a good game at all against QPR. And he does, I think there is a, a sort of perception now building amongst the fan base that he's sort of um, getting away with it to a, to an extent, to be honest. I think he, he looks a little bit tired. He looks, he looks a little bit jaded and he looks like somebody who has played an enormous amount of championship football this season, which of course is the case. He still hasn't there still hasn't been a game where he's been benched for the start of a championship fixture. So, yeah, I think he might be due a rest before long. But for now, I can see Wagner playing him in that number 10 role at home. And uh, up front, there's not really much of a decision to be made for David Wagner, is there? Josh Sargent, absolutely on fire. Fantastic header, jumped so high in the air to plant that, that second goal for Norwich uh, at the weekend. And you can't really argue with the idea that he will start. But that's the 11 that I think David Wagner will choose. Of course, it's an absolutely massive game and you can follow every kick across Pinkin channels. Go to pinkin.com forward slash subscribe to find out more about accessing our subscriber exclusive columnists, analysis, all the good stuff like that. And we've now got a WhatsApp group. There's a pinned tweet at the top of our, or pinned post at the top of our X account now. And I think if you search on WhatsApp, um, the Pinkin, then you should be able to find how you can get updates from us on all the latest articles and Norwich City developments. So plenty for you to get your teeth into there. Hopefully Norwich can get their playoff push back on track against Watford at Carrow Road. See you soon.